Hi everybody, it's your girl Bunny. It's Netflix original series, Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. I strongly encourage you, if you have not watched the introduction video to this series, to watch it because that will help you understand how I give the brief recaps of each episode. But in this video, season one, episode three, what was sundered and undone. It's coming up next. It's Bunny. So we see Princess Brea. She is with the Order of Lesser Service. And you remember from the last episode, the Order of, Les of Lesser Service was her punishment for making Elder Kadia forget his memories and forget his thoughts. Because in the last episode, she switched the teas that he originally wanted to give to her because apparently she was asking too many questions about symbols and books and what they meant. And he thought she was trying to prize. So she he, want, he wanted to give her that memory loss tea, but he drank it and now his memory is lost. So she's serving with the Order of Lesser Service. And while she's serving, she has on this crazy little get up with these bells and all of these things that make little noise to let people know they're coming and they're on their way. So as they walk, you hear ding, 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 and all these little bells and it is driving Brea crazy. <laughs> And what they're trying to do is they're trying to gather these little villagers that are so cute, but they want to be dirty and they're jumping in the dirt and grass and they're making these cute little noises like yeah, 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 yeah. and they <laughs> clearly they love to be dirty and throw stuff around. But to the, the order of lesser service, they think that this is not quaint and the way to live. So they grab all of them and they're trying to put them in soapy water and make them take baths and they're hating the soap and they're like meow, 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 and they're trying to clean them and they're so cute and they try to grab them and one pops out of their arm and they jump back in the dirt and, meow, 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 and get back dirty again so it's a cute little scene showing what the order of lesser service does back at the palace you have Princess Brea's two sisters, Tavra and Celadon. And Celadon is still going on her rant and very upset. I can't stand how she gets away with everything. She makes Elder Kadia forget his memory and her only punishment is going to the Order of Lesser Service. Yet I'm still here having to go through all the, the meetings and the boring political stuff. And she just doesn't have to take responsibility for anything anything that she does and mother doesn't talk to me and you you get to go out and you have your assignments but I'm always stuck here and Tavra she seems more of the calm and she likes calmer person and she likes to make little jokes here and there and just tries to take everything in stride and she tells Celadon I don't think you're upset with your sister Brea I think you're upset with mother because mother barely has time to speak to you. And every time she's speaking to you, it's about politics and meetings and what's going on in the palace. So you might need to rethink who you're actually upset with. And Celadon says, no, I'm upset with her. I'm upset with Brea. And Tavra says, I don't think that's the main focus. And you really need to evaluate what's going on. And if mother is not paying you any attention, all mantra, if she's not paying you any attention and you feel some type of way, you need to take that up with her and not Brea. You have Hup <laughs> and Deet. They're still making their journey forward. And we also have Rion, who's still trying to get to Stone in the Wood because if he can get to Stone in the Wood where his people are, he can share with them his vision of what he saw. He can show them the essence that he has and can prove that he did not kill her. And as he's making his, his journey, he sees a couple who has a little carriage and their wheel is stuck and they can't go on their way. And he says, oh, well, let, let me help you. And they're like, oh, thank you, you're so kind. And as he's fixing the carriage and fixing the wheel, they see his armor they see his hair, they see his face, 
and they put two and two together and figure out this is this person that everyone is talking about that's dangerous. And they say, well, thank you for helping us, but, but, but we've got to go. And, 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 and you should be ashamed of what you've done, what you've done. And he's looking at them like, wow, like this rumor has made it all the way here from where the skitsies are. So he knows the danger is all around him and it's not a good thing. Rhea, she's sick of this service with the order of lesser service, and she wants to escape. She's got to get out of here, and she takes off the jingly little hat, bling, 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 so they won't hear her. She takes that off. She takes off the little shoes with bells, and she's starting to escape and trying to find a way to get out of her, <laughs> her punishment, and she hears a little rumble in the forest, and she hears a swore comes out and she's like oh they're coming for me I don't know how I'm gonna escape and all of a sudden she's tackled and she sees that it's her sister Tavra and she says well what are you doing way out here aren't you supposed to be with the order of lesser service and she says yeah I had to get out of there I couldn't do that anymore this punishment I can't take it I can't do it bathing people and trying to make sure they don't have any dirt on them and constantly being told what to do when all they want to do is play in the mud. It's evident that they don't want to be clean. And so Tavra gives a little laugh and says, I know that it's been rough back at home. Celadon is feeling the way that she's feeling, but I really think that's from mother. I don't think that's from you. So I won't tell anybody, but you know, let's just share this moment as sisters and we'll see if we can work this out. So they share a moment of sisterhood and Tavra wants to make it known um, to her that I'm not the enemy. I don't feel a certain type of way. I know the situation is all messed up. Let's just try to figure out how we can make this better. We have Deet and we have Hup. <laughs> I love saying his name, Hup. And they get to Stone in the Wood. And Stone in, in the Wood is the area where, of course, you have the Gelfling who are more into battle. So they go there and they see a nice little area where people can have drinks and kind of refresh and cool off. And Huff is looking at the drinks like, mmm, like we've got to get some of that. And Deet is looking around at the villagers and they don't like them too much because they don't look like them. And they're starting to you know, do their little murmurs like, who are these people? And Deet is looking around and Deet is just trying to get Hup from looking at all the drinks and saying, hey, like, you might want to pay attention to what's going on around us. And Hup just can't help himself. He takes his cup and a little dip of the liquid and he's just going in like, because they've been walking and they're hot. And one of the villagers says, hey, what are you doing? And they get the fighting and rumbling on. And Deet is like, Hup, stop. We've got to stop this fighting. No, no, no. <laughs> and they're going on and rumbling around. And we have somebody that looks like they're someone of authority. They stop and break it up and says, hey, you, come here. And they drag them on. And Dita's like, no, 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 don't take him away. And they say, a few days in the cellar will get you to calm down. So they put him in the cellar. And Deet is just so sad that he's been put in the cellar for fighting. And she has his little spoon. And she's just wondering, how can I get him out of here? Because we still have our journey to do, and I don't know how to get him out. And she speaks to one of the soldiers and says, I have to get him out of here. Can you please let him get out? He was just defending my honor, and we were trying to find something to drink. Can you let him go? And the soldier says, no, he's in here. He's in here for a reason, and you're just going to have to wait until he gets out go back to the castle of the Skeksis and we have Chamberlain that is speaking to Gurgen who is in captivity and he tells him why don't you be a good friend and tell us where your friend is so we can bring him back here and Gurgen is telling him I'm not going to tell you where he is everything that you that you're doing here is wrong and I can't wait for the day for people to figure out the truth and what you're doing and Chamberlain doesn't expect accept that as an answer and shows him a little beetle in a capsule and lets him know that these beetles are starved enough to the point that when they 
finally let them out of this castle capsule they eat whatever they can get their hands on and the first thing that they go to are fat juicy eyeballs <laughs> because that's the thing that they notice first and he says all of that screaming that you heard the night before, that's because we had to punish the scientist for not figuring out and doing what we wanted him to do. You don't want to be punished like the scientist, do you? And Gurdjian's not having it. He says, no, I won't tell you where he is. I, I would rather be punished. And Chamberlain sits the little beetle in the capsule on a counter right in front of him so he can think about that just a little while longer. Princess Greya wakes makes her way back home because she learns from Annika that she needs to get the brightest jewel that shines in her mother's chamber. So she knows she needs to find that and she also wants to go back to the library where her journal is. Once she's able to get the brightest jewel from her mother's chamber, she has to go back to Annika so Annika can help her discover what those symbols mean that she saw. Rion, he makes his way back to Stone in the Wood because he feels if he can get to Stone in the Wood, he can speak to Almatra Farah, and she is the leader of everyone in Stone in the Wood. He makes his way towards the door, and as he demands to speak with her, he goes up to her throne and says, I really got to tell you the truth. I did not kill her. It's a lie. The Skeksis are telling lies, and if you would just let me dream fast with you, I can show you the truth. I can show you what really happened, and I also have her essence here. This is everything that's left of her and I could just prove to you and tell you the truth and Matra Farah says you are putting us all at risk by even being here the Skeksis are looking for you and you are not only putting us in danger but you're putting a bad notation on my name by even being here he says just let me dream fast with you and I can show you the truth and Matra Farah says you know what? You're right. Your son is sick. And then all of a sudden, we see his father, the captain. He's in the shadows in the back listening to everything. And Rian says, Father? And he says, Yes, son. I've listened to your story, and the Skeksis are right. You are sick in the head. You're not right. I need to capture you and take you back to them now. And he says, no. And he says, don't fight it. Don't fight me because I don't want to hurt you. Let's take you back. And they get into a fight and a scuffle, and all the soldiers are trying to get him. And gladly, Rion is able to escape. Ogra finally makes it to the council where the Skeksis are. And when she gets there, you know, the Skeksis, they're in the tub, they're splishing and splashing and around, and they're getting little massages, and they're like, oh, yes, since we've been able to have some of the essence, I feel so much more radiant now and younger. And you see the little creatures that are giving them massages, and they're like, and they're like giving them massages on their arms and on their back, and they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so they're really just having a blast, not thinking about the crystal, not thinking about how everybody else is suffering. They are just soaking in their new discovery of the essence of a gelfling that they've killed, that they've murdered. And Olga walks in and sees all of this and says, what is this? And they say, oh, it's her. And they're shocked and amazed that she's out of her trance from going into the universe and going into the stars because that's where she's been for all of these years. And they say, oh, oh, oh well, we're not decent and get out. And she's telling them, no, I was awakening, but waking because clearly it's something wrong in Thra and something is wrong with the crystal. So I demand to know what's wrong with it and what's going on. And they're telling her, you're sadly mistaken. There must be something wrong with you. We are doing a wonderful job with protecting the crystal and you either get out basically or get put out. And they're telling her to leave and that she is disrespectful with even being there and inquiring about the crystal. She slowly makes her way out and she says, okay, I'll leave. 
if you're telling me everything's okay, then everything is okay. But you can tell that she's still suspicious and she's slowly leaving out. When she leaves out, she just so happens to find the room that the crystal is being held in. And she's looking at the crystal and saying, what happened to it? Because she sees this dark purple crystal and it's not in the state in which she left it. She sees the cracks. She sees that there's something rumbling on the inside. And she's just so in dismay that the crystal looks the way that it looks. She says, what has happened? What have I done? And as she says that, the crystal speaks back to her and shows her a vision of herself and says, this is what's going on with the crystal. The crystal has been infected by darkness and also look at what's happening. And it shows her the vision of the Gelfling being killed and the crystal taking her essence and she sees the scientist and she sees this the skepsis a uh, drinking of her essence and so she knows the truth now so she is on a mission to figure out how she can fix it and how she can make it right rian and deet they just so happen to cross paths rian is just looking for solitude he has a little fire going and deet says oh hello and he says well hi she says well hello and he's curious because he says well aren't you afraid of me because he knows the entire area knows that he is this fugitive of a person that killed his girlfriend which isn't true and she says well i'm not afraid of you no because keep in mind, Dee doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> she has the slightest clue who he is. And he says, well, that's good that you don't think I'm a monster because everybody thinks I'm a monster. And Dee says, that's it, a monster, thank you. And she gives him a hug because she's come up on an idea, apparently, of what to do in her bad situation. He says, well, okay and deep quickly leaves and rian is by himself again in the forest princess brea goes back to the library and she swoops in because she has wings and she can fly and she goes into the library looking for her journal and the librarian is like what are you doing because she's starting all this wind and it's ruffling pages and messing up the books that he just put in order and she says i just need my journal i just need my journal she quickly get, gets the journal and the librarian is like where are you going what is going on and why aren't you with the order of a lesser service she says i can't tell you right now and she looks for the journal and she gets it and then she swoops and she flies to hurry up to get back to her mother's chamber because she is trying to find what annika told her to find the brightest jewel in your mother's chamber so she swoops down and she goes into her mother's chamber and she's looking around hmm brightest jewel brightest jewel and she's looking around and she sees on the ceiling that there is a bright jewel that's there there's a lot of things glowing but there's only one that is the brightest so she grabs it and she takes off again and when she takes off she is in a hurry her wings are just a flapping and she's just winds blowing and she's trying to hurry up to get back to annika to bring her the brightest jewel she goes and she dips in and she sees Annika in the area where she is and she also sees the elder who has lost his memory and says, oh, well, how are you? And she's like, oh, hello. And she goes, what's wrong with him? And she says, well, the elder here has lost his memory. And since he's lost his memory, I've given myself a little promotion. So, um, elder, go and pack this and this and make you know basically trying to get him out of the way and he's like well okay <laughs> and he just leaves and takes off and princess brea says well i have the brightest jewel and i guess that's the payment that you need in order to help me to figure out what this symbol means and she says oh it's just terrible that we have a bad reputation as payment this is not payment this is what you need to answer your question about all of the symbols and all of the questions that you have. 
So she gives her the brightest jewel and she's singing this little tune to the jewel. And then all of a sudden, it starts to crack and open. And it's this beautiful looking butterfly. She tells Princess Brea, the totem is the animal of your clan. And your clan, this animal will tell you where to go. Just ask it a question and it will take you, take you where you need to go. And Princess Brea says, I need to know the truth. And it starts to fly and it goes off. And Annika tells her, fly fast. In other words, you better hurry up or it's gonna leave you behind. And she says, well, Annika, thank you. You've been a great help. And she starts to develop her wings and she follows the totem to take her where she needs to go to get all of her answers answered. As she's doing that, we then cut to the scene with the scientist. And the scientist is in the lab now. And Chamberlain says, I'm sorry that you had to be punished and that you lost your eye. And then he turns around and the scientist has a little light where he's lost his eye because his punishment was being in this little contraption where they put the beetle in there to go to his face and to do whatever it did to his face. So he's telling him, even though you've lost your eye, I hope that doesn't take you away from things that you need to do because the scientist, they've told him by the emperor that you need to fix this machine because the last time he used the machine to get the life essence, um, the machine broke because they pushed it to the limit to pull the life es essence from the Gelfling. And he says, I hope your eye doesn't slow you down, but you need to fix this machine fast because we need to get the essence. So back to it. We then cut to Princess Brea and the butterfly has taking her back to her mother's throne. And it goes to the throne and it embeds itself into the chair. And when it embeds itself to the chair, the throne opens up. And then we have this underground chamber. And she says, well, hello? And she has no idea what's underneath, but she has no choice but to go down into the dark chambers to see what secrets lie beneath. So that was the end of the episode. Let me know what you think. Some subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. And follow me on Instagram, same profile name, officialbun underscore E. Hope you enjoyed the recap. See you for episode four. Yeah!